good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world, whenever you're listening to this. For me, it's morning. It is the morning after the Aries full moon, October 2024. I didn't necessarily plan on recording this morning in the witching hour. It took me a moment to realize that my animal companion, Onyx, actually woke me. She didn't say anything, which is usually her way. She just stood at the edge of the bed. She needed to go outside, so got up, went outside with her, and basked in some really beautiful, wonderful moonlight. Pre-dawn, wind blowing, moon shining. It was really grateful, really beautiful. Came back in the house and decided to go sit. I was sitting and contemplating my own process and journey and began to get a download. I was given the nudge to go ahead and record. So I'm gonna call this this spiral, I kind of feel like I'm in a spiral. It's like we're all in this spiral together and where I am is on the other side of the full moon. I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, welcome. This is Rudy Cosmic Soul, transmitting the eye. I'm not going to use an insight layout, which that was not the plan. I don't think that was Spirit's plan either. So first thing that's coming out is transmute false notions impacting your connection to spirit and it's number five. The first thought is change. Change is coming in and with that change, really consider transmuting false notions impacting connection to spirit so i think for a lot of us who have been on this journey of really deeply stepping into our shadow work doing the healing work paying attention to synchronicities so we have been doing this work in 2024 to strip back the layers of the bullshit given to us by this construct i think for those who are recovering from organized religion, you really know what I'm talking about. And we've been really stepping into this understanding that energy, spirit, cosmos is not outside ourselves. It's not this entity that is far beyond us and looks down upon us, but it is part of who we are and that it offers energy for us to tap into, to aspire to, to look into, and that's our connection to spirit, our connection to ourselves, our connection to each other. I think in this moment, in this timeline, on this segment of the spiral, really our connection to the earth. And so when we start doubting it to transmute false notions, impacting your connection to spirit, you are connected, you are part of the process, you are here for a reason and our next card up is another number five and it's from the heart and it is transmute false premised identity commitments that no longer serve you okay spirit starting to come in pretty clear here why i needed to do this reading we're on the other side of this really amazing full moon right right on the other side so it's not like on the other side it's past but like the illumination has been with us and that's what i'm getting it like we have the opportunity to use the power of this massive super full moon in aries to really light up to illuminate all the false premises that we've been sitting with, all the things that we have been working to release, to see, to understand, to choose under our own free will, with our own imminent powers, what we want to believe, what we don't want to believe, 
what we want to connect to, what we don't want to connect to, what we want to commit to, what we don't want to commit to. And so this is a heart card. This is the divine feminine coming in. First card was a spirit pillar, and that's the essence, the one, the cosmos. You could name it God, Goddess, Buddha, Allah, whatever name you give to it is the name you give to it. And then right behind that was five, was a heart, heart, which is uh, signifies the essence of the divine feminine. So both are coming in with this idea of transmute false notions, false notions about how we are connected to spirit, false notions about how we are our identity commitments. So that identity commitment one really is around shedding the parts of ourselves that don't fit. And I think in particular for those of us who have been on this journey about releasing oppressive, suppressive, and controlling aspects of the matrix and the construct and as it pertains to identity, it's really going to be this is next level, folks, right? So this is really going to be for us who are really committed to our identities, whether that is our race, our gender, our class, our uh, religion, our sexuality, really looking at those things and making sure that it is of my true I. Even when I think, like, uh, an example I've often used with folks um, I've coached is around my gender identity as a woman, how it interacts with my racial and ethnicity identity as Black and Puerto Rican. Those two things together means there's parts of me that have been indoctrinated in this idea that I am a woman, therefore I am to nurture. And as a black woman, just that superwoman sort of identity of like, I'm really here to take care of everybody else. And our society really leans into that. I mean, particularly now, everybody's waiting for the black woman to save the world. And so it becomes really important to transmute any false premise identity commitments I might be holding, even around the things that I hold dear. And just like specifying, specifying, is it still serving me? Is this idea that I am here to nurture serving me? Maybe it's yes. Maybe it's no. Maybe it's maybe, right? There is no judgment here it's just the idea of looking into it and being intentional and active in terms of what i choose what are we choosing how are we stepping into our free will and actively accessing our fullest selves and then the last card out is a mind card that mind card is the divine masculine it is 10, we went five, five, 10, and it is engage and enjoy the learning adventure in your journey. So as we go through transmuting, it is, it can feel like a lot of work. It can, I know, I know, I know, I know. It can feel, I mean, that's when I decided to get up and sit this morning, I felt, um, I just felt this, this, I don't want to say a weight, right? Cause it weight implies heaviness or negativity and it wasn't necessarily that but a, a gravity i just felt this pull that's that that full moon full moon pull of something i needed to sit in the dark in silence and move through some thought let my thoughts flow it's definitely around the divine masculine in terms of sitting in the logic, making decisions where you're really understanding how emotions are playing in the decision I'm making. This one is saying engage and enjoy the learning adventure. So as we're going through feeling that gravity, right, feeling that pull to transmute false notions, false premises, to remember that it's a learning journey, we came here to learn what it means to be human, to experience what it means to be human, to remember what it means to be human. And with a 10 card, it's like the end of a cycle, completion, culmination. It's like in that, as I'm transmuting all these false notions and these false premises, it's leading me to uh, the end of a cycle. So enjoy, enjoy the learning adventure because we went through it. 
that definitely means another door is opening and another learning journey begins. But if it's helpful to anyone out there that's hearing this to be affirmed that yes, this long journey is coming to the end and a new one is opening up. As I was preparing to sit down and pull some of my trends reading the i-cards for this, I also got the nudge to pull an oracle card from one of my favorite decks that's called the Shaman's Dream Oracle. So we're going to pull a card from that to kind of see what message this can give us that helps us integrate. And we pulled number 38, which is 11. We are progressing forward many masks the authentic self energizing internal allies a conscious shift we live in a world where everyone we see wears a mask we wear these masks to cover up and protect who we really are we learn to do so because we've been conditioned to try to appear a certain way to fit into society masks allow us to belong so we remain within the confines of what is expected masks are not inherently bad Rather, they provide context and structure for our personalities and soul's expression. Some of us might believe that a particular mask fixed and hardened onto us is the permanent face. We forget that we are living beings with a multitude of faces, enabling us to experience a fuller, more vibrant life. Your authentic essence doesn't want to be constrained by others' expectations anymore. Now is the time to strip away the mask you've accepted and discover who you really are. A new self is emerging and your perception changes as you adopt new ways of being. And I feel like that's speaking directly to that number five heart card that we just pulled, transmute false premised identity commitments that no longer serve you. So right now, it's really important to allow yourself to experiment, to experience the world in all its myriad potentials and possibilities. Try on different masks and let yourself be fluid and curious, which I think is why the mind card we pulled, engage and enjoy the learning venture in your journey. Enjoy the learning adventure could definitely mean like try on those different masks and have fun while doing it. Don't feel constrained to identity commitments that you made yesterday because today is today try on different masks and let yourself be fluid and curious how will you know what you love and what you resonate with if you don't take off the mask you've always worn and test drive some new ones your authentic essence will never change it will only express itself differently through these optional selves through trial and error you discover more and more about who you want to become what would it feel like to explore this side of you? Anything is possible if you're willing to open up to your potential. You truly can move beyond the barriers that society has set. Your imagination. Use your imagination and step into the magic. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Spirit. I, it's, I mean, it's like, yes, transmute the notions impacting your connection to Spirit. So that's part of the, um, you know, Anything is possible if you're willing to open up to your potential. So again, those of us who have been on this mission to release the confines of organized religion, I really think that's speaking to us to just step into our connection to spirit and really transmute that which we've been told that means. And then use your imagination and step into the magic. Enjoy the learning adventure. Enjoy the learning adventure of that exploration of finding your authentic self through trying on so many different aspects of yourself, stepping into different pieces of your identity and not getting stuck into one particular rut of who uh, we've been told we are. And then we tell ourselves we are right. It's that internal and external work that we have to do, which is the essence of transmuting the I. So I'm going to leave that here. Hopefully whoever this message was for arrives and finds it. Thank you, spirit, ancestors, guides, guardians, archangels, for this message, for the nudge to go ahead and spend this time 
my energy stays with me, your energy stays with you as above, so below, mm -hmm. as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. Ashe. Here on YouTube, Rooted Cosmic Soul offers transmuting the I insight session collective readings in which we engage one out of 16 intentionally designed and divined layouts for the collective session. If you'd like to learn more and or schedule a one-on-one -on -one insight session, links can be found in the description. Also, Ruta Cosmic Soul offers story time, offering high vibration storytelling via original magical reality fiction, and alignment time, offering considerations for spiritual care grounded in the concepts of transmuting the eye. The best way to engage and to know when we post is by subscribing to the Rooted Cosmic Soul channel. You are deeply appreciated. Thank you for spending time with us. Infinite love and gratitude.